Nvidia has finally overhauled their archaic control panel for their GPUs. This is great because many PC gamers who use their GPUs have been asking for a more modern control panel to adjust their settings. Along with the update, they bring some cool features such as RTX HDR to help increase visual fidelity on HDR capable displays. But wait, there is a huge caveat with this HDR and I'm going to be showing you guys why you'll probably want to avoid using a RTX HDR until this is fixed. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Today we're going to be taking a look at performance numbers I attained from benchmarking multiple games using Nvidia's latest RTX HDR feature. Now if you're not in the know, Nvidia recently released a beta app you can download from their website that works in tandem with their latest drivers. This new app is what will eventually replace the old Nvidia control panel completely. This is something PC gamers have been asking Nvidia to do for years as far as I know because the old Nvidia Nvidia control panel is probably older than a good chunk of the PC user base. If you were to ask my personal opinion, I actually didn't mind the old control panel as much. Sure, it was a bit slow and it looks like something that belongs in Windows XP, but it did the job and it never broke on me. And that is what is important to me. Aesthetics come after, but the program needs to function right first. Along with this update, Nvidia also brought some cool new features such as RTX HDR and Vibrance. HDR on PC has been somewhat of a mess. And with RTX HDR, NVIDIA aims to fix a lot of the quirks people have been facing, such as details being clipped, overexposure, black crush, etc. So it's great that there's somebody out there that's looked at this and said, hey, we need to fix this. This is the PC platform we're talking about. And yet with HDR, it's been inferior to consoles because there just hasn't been any proper standard. If you guys want a more thorough overview of the NVIDIA app, the settings, overlays, and all that good stuff, then you'll want to check out this video by Erock on Tech. He goes over everything in a detailed manner. My video isn't going to cover that. I was prompted on making this video because of a channel that popped up on my feed called Plasma TV for Gaming. And I love it when YouTube's algorithm works right and recommends some great relevant content to me. I highly recommend checking this video out, especially if you have an LG OLED TV because he goes over some different different types of settings and stats pertaining to Nvidia's RTX HDR, and comments on the visual benefits in a detailed manner with some demonstrations. I'll link it down below in the video description. The part of the video that struck out to me the most was when he mentioned how enabling Nvidia's RTX HDR caused a significant performance loss and said he had received feedback from people within his community, with some going as far as to mention performance losses they experienced was around 20%, which is crazy. You don't have to pay money, okay? But it's not free on performance. It cost performance. And man, one of the biggest strengths of HDR gaming is that usually you don't see any performance hit, okay? You just get a better picture quality and you get the same frame rate. Not with this one. So, man, that is definitely a deal breaker to me okay because i have so many ways to get a great hdr that i would not sacrifice five frames even <laughs> to to just get this working let alone 10 percent some people even reporting up to 20 percent performance i mean that's atrocious okay somebody in the comments said he had a, a 40 60 i believe or 30 60 and he was saying 20% performance, that's just unacceptable. Okay, I would not use that at all. And he's absolutely right. As good as HDR can look, if you have to endure a 20% performance loss in some cases, then that is unacceptable to me, especially when the built-in Windows HDR can look adequate through some tweaking with a negligible performance loss. That is why I decided to download the newest drivers along with the Nvidia app for myself and test out some games to see what the performance impact would be, if it'll be a small hit that you won't notice, or it'll be a drastic one. Before diving into our gaming benchmarks, I wanted to quickly highlight the specs for our test system. For the CPU, we've got an Intel Core i9-13900K which has its P-Cores running at 5.7GHz, E-Cores are clocked at 4.6GHz, and the ring is overclocked to 5GHz. For the memory, we've 
we've got 32 gigabytes of team groups t create ddr5 7200 with tuned timings the motherboard is an msi z790 carbon wi-fi the gpu is an msi rtx 4090 which runs its core at 3 gigahertz and its memory running at 24 gigabits per second all our games are stored on the corsair mp600 gen 4 nvme drive we have our test system running the latest windows 11 updates and as mentioned earlier we're using nvidia's latest 551.61 drivers with the nvidia beta app now the monitor i'm using is pixios px277 pro and this monitor isn't really capable of giving you a true hdr image it doesn't get bright enough and with hdr enabled the monitor looks atrocious versus having it disabled now that really doesn't matter in our case here because what we're mainly concerned with is the performance impact when RTX HDR is enabled. As long as it can accept an HDR signal and then enable those features, that is all we need in order to conduct our tests. Alrighty, with that out of the way, let's take a look at our first game which is Alan Wake 2 using high settings. Just looking at the 1440p benchmarks, we can clearly see that there is a considerable difference when having RTX HDR on versus off. We're looking at a difference of 12% for the average FPS and 9% for the 1% lows. Now in a game like this that probably wouldn't be that big of a deal to most people but yes we see that there is indeed a performance penalty when using Nvidia's RTX HDR and Vibrance feature. Now if you're wondering what the performance was like using Windows HDR and Auto HDR well there's barely any performance drop we're looking at nearly identical performance to SDR. Again I don't know how much better RTX HDR is as I haven't tested it on my OLED yet so I can't really comment on that whether or not it's worth it but if you were to ask me personally I take the HDR solution that doesn't drop performance versus the other solution that does even if the former is visually inferior but wait the story goes much deeper than that so after I had finished my testing I decided to disable RTX HDR and when I went back into the game I had noticed that I was still getting lower FPS I was confused because everything was disabled HDR for my monitor was also disabled but I was still getting lower performance performance as if I still had Nvidia's RTX HDR enabled. I double checked the settings in the Nvidia app and confirmed it was disabled. I had absolutely no idea what was going on and eventually after some troubleshooting I decided to completely DDU my drivers or use display driver uninstaller which I'm sure you're all familiar with and then do a fresh reinstall of the drivers. And then what do you know, my performance was back to normal. That is absolutely unacceptable if you ask me. So if you were someone who had decided to try out Nvidia's RTX HDR and then you weren't satisfied with it and then decided, you know what, I'm going to disable it, while well, your performance would still remain low until you DDU'd your drivers and did a fresh reinstall of them. This just can't happen. Why is the performance still taking a hit even after I had disabled RTX HDR? It made no sense to me. Continuing on, here are the 4K numbers. We see the margins improve a bit where now the difference for the average FPS is 9% and 6% for the 1% lows. Moving on, we have Starfield with high settings and at 1440p, our average FPS is 16% without RTX HDR and our 1% lows are a whopping 32% better. That is just simply too severe of a performance drop. Nvidia is going to have to find a way to make this feature more efficient. At 4K, we see the same margins for the average FPS, but our 1% lows are still bad at 24%. Next up, we've got Remnant 2 on high settings, and this one isn't as bad as the previous titles. At 1440p, we're seeing a 9% difference for the average FPS and 1% lows. Then at 4K, we see the margins improve a bit to 7% and 6% respectively. With these kinds of margins, most people probably wouldn't be able to notice the drop in performance. You guys let me know if RTX HDR at most would drop performance around 5% in any game, would you be okay with it? Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is next using very high settings with RT enabled. We observed some pretty drastic drops in performance. At 1440p, we see there's a difference of 17% for the average FPS and 1% lows. Then at 4K, while the average FPS margin does close up a bit to 14%, the 1% lows are further widened at 24%, and that to me is definitely noticeable. There's just a lot more variance in performance. In The Last of Us Part 1 using high settings, we can actually see some pretty decent results. At 1440p, without RTX HDR performance, 
performance is only better by 4% for the average FPS and 5% for the 1% lows. And these are the kinds of results I think people would tolerate. And then at 4K, we see those margins drop more to the point where performance is virtually identical. This is totally okay and what I would expect from other titles. Baldur's Gate 3 in Act 3 using high settings is next, and this is another game which is showing us excellent results. Now I think the reason why this game isn't impacted as severe as some of the other titles is because it's primarily CPU bound, even at 4K. Nonetheless, you can turn on RTX HDR in this title and enjoy good visuals without having to worry about a drastic performance loss. Hogwarts Legacy using high settings is next, and this is a game that I can see being a prime candidate for a lot of people to utilize RTX HDR because it's a detailed open world fantasy game with lots of exquisite looking scenery. Unfortunately, the performance penalty in this title isn't good, as at 1440p we're looking at a 17% difference for the average FPS and 12% for the 1% lows. Then at 4K, those margins grow to 20% and 19% respectively. Now just pausing for a moment. Sure, the performance loss is pretty big, but with the performance numbers like these, in a single player game like this, do you really need to be chasing frames? On the other hand though, should an HDR solution even be penalizing your hardware like this when other solutions exist that don't exhibit this behavior? Something to think about. Marvel Spider-Man Remastered is next, using very high settings and the performance when using RTX HDR is atrocious. At 1440p without RTX HDR, our average FPS is 19% better and our 1% lows are a whopping 27% better. Then at 4K we see the margins for the average FPS grow to 30% and the gap for our 1% lows also widens to 29%. Again, these performance drops are just way too drastic for an HDR solution and it's results like these that prevent me from recommending it. Moving on and we have Cyberpunk 2077 using high and ultra settings, which is another title that shows you're better off just turning RTX HDR off and using the built-in Windows solution because the performance difference is too large. At 1440p, the average FPS is 24% better without it enabled, and the 1% lows are 17% better. Then at 4K, the margins close up a bit, but we're still looking at 16% and 14% respectively. The last game I wanted to take a look at was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2022 with normal quality settings, and while most of the games that we looked at were single player non-competitive titles where some might have been okay with sacrificing a bit of performance, this is a competitive shooter where most most are after all the frames they can get, so it's crucial there's no hindrance to their performance, and well unfortunately using RTX HDR just wouldn't be viable. At 1440p without using RTX HDR, the average FPS is 22% better, and our 1% lows are 17% better, and then at 4K we are seeing similar margins. Now it's time to take a look at our 10 game average. Overall at 1440p we observed a 15% difference in performance, and then at 4K the experience would be very similar with a 14% margin. You know, if we were dealing with a 3-5% performance loss, then at that point one could argue that sure, you're losing a bit of performance, you probably wouldn't have noticed anyways, but your overall visual fidelity is going to be much better, then RTX HDR would be totally viable and most people would have chosen this option versus Windows Auto HDR. However, when we're seeing these drastic performance drops, margins in some cases of up to 32%, then that just isn't worth it to me. Now, to be fair, this is still a beta feature which means they are still working on it and hopefully when this stable non-beta release comes out, some of the performance drops are alleviated because whatever algorithm they're using, it just isn't efficient right now. I've also heard from people who have tried this feature mention that the performance hit is fine because RTX HDR should be used for older titles where your performance will be better because, well, it's old, so that means you're getting a high frame rate already, which, you know, I can understand that angle and I would be on board with that. However, until NVIDIA can fix the problem, I noticed where performance wasn't back to normal until I had to fresh install my drivers, then I'm not going to bother using it in some select titles when that's going to affect other games clearly. In conclusion, NVIDIA's overhaul of their GPU control panel, along with the introduction of features like RTX, HDR, and Vibrance, marks a significant step forward for PC gamers seeking a modernized settings and improved visual fidelity. However, the allure of RTX, HDR comes with a significant caveat. 
up a notable performance hit that undermines its appeal. Through rigorous benchmarking and testing, it becomes evident that enabling RTX HDR can result in performance drops ranging from 5% to a staggering 32% across various games. Such drastic reductions in FPS and 1% lows render RTX HDR impractical for many gamers, especially when alternative HDR solutions exist with minimal performance impact. Moreover, the issue extends beyond mere performance concerns. Disabling RTX HDR doesn't always restore performance to its original state, requiring users to resort to drastic measures like a complete driver reinstall using tools like DDU, that's third party. This lack of seamless functionality exacerbates the frustration of those seeking to optimize their gaming experience. While while Nvidia's RTX HDR remains in beta, there is hope that future updates will address these performance issues and enhance its efficiency. Until then, the trade-off between the visual fidelity and performance remains too steep for widespread adoption. As gamers await a more refined implementation, caution is warranted in embracing RTX HDR as a go-to solution for HDR gaming on Nvidia GPUs. Alrighty guys, so that's gonna do it for this one, we'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.